All right, so moving a megalith with primitive technology, Mussolini's monolith, 250 tonnes, not including the weight of the casing and the sled, but coming down the mountain. Um, now note that it's tied at the back, so there's some descriptions. Yeah, you, you don't have oxen or team of men pulling from the front when you're going downhill because this thing, if it runs away from you, it's going to run them, run them over. But uh, notice the primitive technique as depicted in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. You bring rails from the front and you put them, rails from the back, and you put them there at the front. And you have a cranky foreman who knows what he's doing and he's making sure everyone's uh, working in line. That's the number one. So this massive megalith would be one of the heaviest uh, ever moved in history over 250 tons because of the weight of the case and the sled itself and i think it's closer to 300 but let's say 250. uh rails from the front from the back bring them to the front if you ever hear that wooden rails would crush even the 1200 ton block it, it, that is just a nonsense like just ask what their sources are because you can go into any technical database get up the um a modulus value can um crush value of timbers they will absolutely support these and it's again what like here okay here's the evidence for it it's a huge block of marble marble weighs the same or more than granite so you can't sort of say oh well it's marble not granite it's even more difficult uh, in that sense but uh these guys work they didn't move these blocks every day this was a very rare special event because people weren't ordering it why don't people build with mega lifts now well people aren't investing in it if uh, <laughs> but with the, the mo modern tech we have now if we wanted to like we'd just be throwing these things around fiber rope fiber rope will support it as it's going down the mountain you could use a, a friction knot so a bit like mountain climbers use you know when if someone falls you can pull it that gives friction on the rope and they stop dead so uh, or you could just use a reverse crane and have cap stands and pulleys and let it down slowly so the issue of the rope or the timber simply isn't one people who know what they're doing you know some are moving big blocks regularly not this big but they that those skills translate over so a lot of these experiment you know i've seen um reconstructions done by uh people who have read a bit but you know go to an old time and go to someone with experience um you know if i want to as my brother says if i want to learn about um, milking a cow i'll go to a dairy uh not to a uh, someone who's written their thesis on on milking so this is them moving it now then there's another really tricky issue that's going to come how did they steer this so here they because they were lowering it from behind and they could twist you know they had a bit of an angle there but to do really delicate to more delicate turns in this and we'll see that in a moment how how they do that but again this is a huge block um the uh, all but the largest obelisks in egypt which you know people fascinate over no doubt how were they moved you know well this block is as heavy as those and it's coming down a mountain unlike egypt or any other place um where these big blocks were moved are basically moved across horizontal ground very short distance from the quarry to the river uh, then a very short distance from the river to the final site this block was moved 17 miles much much further than any of the whether it's Baalbek or Egypt or any of these other blocks they simply weren't moved um, a large distance but now we can get into the nitty-gritty of it a bit and look at what's really going on they're using 80 oxen unlike people the oxen can't be synchronized so another thing is about breaking the inertia it's once the block gets moving it moves really easy now see the well, they're all tugging they're all pulling they're really trying to get this thing moving and once they go well they're just at walking speed um i'll put the link to, i did one on the megalith movers of sumba who carry on this ancient tra tradition uh, they had they had the same problem they'd be tugging jerking on the rope and then once the thing moves and the inertia has gone the conservation of momentum i think it's called then the thing just wants to keep moving so the oxen were to break you know, the inertia and because unlike humans they can't be synchronized with a chant so well you know you need a certain you know, only so many of the oxen will be pulling at one time and also as they're coming down the mountain there is maybe there's one somewhere in switzerland but there is no mountain road that goes directly straight down at a constant angle if you're going down a mountain 
that means you're coming up as well so in this clip i put the whole link to the whole compilation i put together on it they're also moving uphill so this is not just a downhill exercise it's uh, all mountain roads, a little bit, you go down for a mile and then you go a couple hundred feet up. You go down for a mile, a couple, couple hundred feet up. So it's not just, well, they're going downhill. No, they're also going uphill and over a much larger distance than any over land than any of those blocks were moved as well. But no, they're traveling through these very narrow streets, steering this thing through. If, if this wasn't being steered accurately, they'd be tearing the uh, walls off all of those buildings again you'll see the, t the twists and the turns and this is a primitive ancient technique so it's uh, still being practiced in Sumba but there's a, a couple other points now I'll, I'll do some illustrations in a moment but notice closely that the rails are at an angle so it's not just laid flat on the ground you have rails running parallel to the movement of the block and then the rails like a V where they're turned in and that just like a train line i'll show you that in a moment just like uh, why train wheels are at an angle if you set your rails up like that on especially on corners the block is going to go exactly where you tell it to you don't need to put massive forces pulling and tugging on the sides to try and twist and turn it and to get it where you want to go so here we see a couple screenshots and a close-up of how the rails were laid out to move this absolutely huge megalith. If it was in, in ancient times, this would be a mysterious piece of lost ancient high technology. And how was it done? Well, go to the old timers and, and how did they do it? So uh, first to note that the rails are not, they're roughly shaped rather than squared timbers. So perfectly squared off rails like this wouldn't be the best choice because they have a large surface area and so it acts like a suction cup where it, where especially because they lubricate them with oil that same thing that can make them slippery uh well can add act like a suction cup and really lock those things in um there was a experiment i think mark Lerner and another fella tried to move a 20 ton obelisk um, they had enough people but the rope snapped and they couldn't get it to move well because they were using timbers like this so uh, but how did the actual you know people who did this as a profession not as a you know um, inexperienced so we can use that same uh, so we go back to um, uh, Nineveh would that's uh, I always get my Mesopotamians mixed up but around about 700 BC um, Sennacherib Assyrian, sorry there, and here are some pictures of the those Lamassu, those half lion, half men um, statues being pulled out, and you can see that they're using levers and a sled and manpower, lots of foremen organising, arranging people. So again, just like that uh, Sumba video, I'll put the link to the full video in the description because the video is great because it shows how they use chants and songs and and to you know uh, encourage them work songs and also to to keep in timing because it's not about everyone just um yet you know pulling on the rope as hard as they can there's a very special technique where you jerk it jerk it jerk it and then once it starts moving the thing just slides so ancient technique levers in the back a sled and a well-organized team of workers to get that moving but the important so that would again oh well that's just a cartoon okay here's from the british museum and there's one of the reliefs in there and the key point is to like they've already in the graphic they've already focused in on it so uh focusing a little bit more again the artist has told us a lot because these are just branches you can still see the um smaller branches that have been cut off in there they're not using a nice squared off log um you know four by four piece of timber they're using rough logs and and that's just the same as what these old fellas were doing uh less surface area so the sled slides over there's less chance of a suction cup effect and there's also another advantage as well because um firstly notice on the left that the rail rails themselves are curved in the full video of that Mussolini's monolith you can you see a move and you get an idea well the way that the rails are set up can make another really big difference uh, and help 
in the movement and in directing or steering this massive thing exactly where you want it to go through these really tight narrow streets uh, you go off a little bit and someone's going to lose their house because this 250 ton block is just going to rip that masonry uh, wouldn't stand a chance against a the kind of force like that so they, they had to get it right uh, first thing to notice is that instead of being laid flat on the ground that, that they are arranged in the shallow v so you have the outside rails which are running in direction that you want to move and then you have the rails running across and they're set at an angle so one side is resting on top of the outside rail and on the other side the opposite's happening it creates a shallow v and this is a, an ancient a primitive ancient simple knowledge so for instance you might have seen our footage of when they roll barrels down the rail now the barrels will even fall over corner they don't go flying off because they're they're fat in the middle and skinny at the ends that's exactly the same principle of um, train wheels they're not flat to sit on on the um, rails they're at an angle and that keeps the train when it's moving forward it keeps it centered there are flanges on those wheels which help but the real thing that keeps a train wheel in the center is that they're cut at an angle and so they want to fall down so it's just like a ramp each wheel is trying to fall down towards the center and that's how also that they stay on the rails in a turn so whether it's barrels which come before train wheels uh, railways rail is an old-fashioned word for a fence and so that's because the old-fashioned railways which were made of timber and just were for carts coming in and out of mines it looked like a fence that had been laid down on its side so that's where railroad comes from fence road but by laying it like these so the sled is going to slide down the middle it's always going to want to fall down into the middle of that shallow V. The heaviest part of it is going to decide where, the, where it is at that particular moment. And so they can steer this thing, these huge things, around the, cor around the corner very, very precisely. And the wood does not collapse. It just, if anyone says the rope's not strong enough or the wood's not strong enough, uh, no. no. This is not, not remotely true. It's, it's just one of these myths which has been built up you know, just like earthen ramps would collapse under the weight of a 70-ton block. This is just stuff made up by Graham Hancock and that sort of whole type of circle. Uh, it's just so far from the truth, it's it's ridiculous and so easily checked that it's you know, shameful that it still carries on. All right, so just like the Blue Arrow show, the, the sled coming down the middle is always going to want to fall to the middle of this V. It's gravity can be your enemy but gravity can be your friend and that's why the you know the the, 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 the smart fellas uh, with experience knew how to do these things so even though it wasn't every day that they're bringing down a mega lift down from the mountain um, they knew enough and had enough experience in the smaller scale to just to translate it to the bigger the rules of physics don't mysteriously change at 100 tons or 500 tons or a thousand tons that's like you might hear well that'll work great for 50 tons but what about a hundred tons no it will work for a hundred tons if the rope can support the forces being applied if which it will tensile strength of ancient rope is hemp rope super strong and the timber can support it because you look at any go to any stone yard look at a large block and what's it sitting on on a pallet which is held up basically by three maybe four timbers up there so ropes will work uh wood will support that weight ramps will not collapse underneath that weight um, because otherwise why don't hills collapse when they build giant roads on roads over ridges and have towns sitting on top of urban hills um, they make ramps for <laughs> massive equipment to go over. You, I don't know if you've ever seen those huge mining machines. They're so big they, they don't even have wheels. They have legs for walking. They're just massive machines. It, it, when they're operating in the mine, they've even got the added weight of the ore in there, and they don't collapse in, in the dirt. So that's another... Uh, if you hear that, especially if you hear those together, just back out of a room because especially if it's a, a alleged you know expert uh, then you know that they they've got no idea what they're talking about all right so there's you know 
how to move. I'll put a link in. All this one just to show those examples. We'll go through them bit by bit uh, in more shorter videos rather than a long one, and I'll put a compilation together. But uh, whether it's the rope or the wood, how did they steer it? Um, it's just not a not a problem. It's in the record. There are also pictures of Egyptians moving massive statues along the same lines, but their their images are a bit more stylized and don't show the detail as much as what we see here with these Assyrian pictures. And yeah, if you know you know you don't the, the less mistakes you make, the better it's going to work. And if you know a few extra trick tricks to get you that much more um, productivity. Uh, the world is yours and so it's not a problem yes it's just physics um physics and real world experience at in the 1930s when this was moved they could have employed a lot more modern technology because it was just a one-off job this is what they're used to doing well these fellas could get away with it later on when they got to rome and it was more glitzy and they, they brought in metal rails and a nice big brand new mason's winch and that stuff but from the top of a mountain down to the bottom which includes going up hills as well uh, this was how they did it and uh, with the, the oxen can be replaced with manpower or rope pulleys and levers and stuff but yeah just for now this is the one and so this is how the sleds are done links in the description to a few other related videos especially if you haven't seen it you're new to the channel uh, the full I made a like over one hour compilation compilation of very recent megalith moves in the Indonesian island of Sumba which has this tradition of well, megaliths and they're not Atlantean so alrighty have a good one